we visited Jerash on the day trip from Amman along Badum Kais and Ajlun Castle that I talked about in my previous video. Jerash is an impressive archaeological site located 45 kilometers from Amman, rising about 600 meters above sea level and is one of the largest and best preserved Greco-Roman cities, which earned the nickname Pompeii of the Middle East. The earliest evidence of settlement in Jerash dates back to the Neolithic age around 7500 BC, where the human remains were uncovered. Historically, the city was known as Jerasa. The name of the city comes from an Aramaic word meaning katsa, or a place where stones are cut, referring to the process of acquiring the stones used for construction in the city. Ancient Greek inscriptions from the city support that the city was founded by Alexander the Great, who allegedly settled each Macedonian soldiers in the 4th century BC, when he left Egypt and crossed Syria en route to Mesopotamia. In the early 18th BC, King Alexander Janes besieged and conquered Gerasa, incorporating it into the Kingdom of Judea, when the most of public buildings in Gerasa may have been destroyed during that period. With the Roman conquest of the area in 63 BC, the short-lived Jewish rule of Gerasa came to an end. General Pompey attached the city to the Decapolis, a league of ten Hellenistic cities that enjoyed considerable autonomy under Roman protection. The city has been principally inhibited by Syrians, but also having a small Jewish community. During the First Jewish-Roman War, Gerasa was among the few non-Jewish cities in the region, not to kill or imprison its Jewish residents, and its residents even escorted any Jews who wanted to leave to the border. In the second half of the first century AD, the city of Gerasa achieved great prosperity. It was absorbed into the Roman province of Arabia, which included the cities of Philadelphia, nowadays Amman, Petra and Bostra. The Romans ensured security and peace in this area, which enabled its people to devote their efforts and time to economic development and encourage civic building activity. We met a Jordanian craftsman who showed us how he creates the colorful sand bottles by putting a little sand of beige color on the bottom and slowly adding another colorful sand on the top. He also explained us the phenomenon of dancing columns that can be seen today by wedging a spoon between the blocks and watching it move up and down as the columns subtly sway. These columns are composed of multiple cylindrical stone blocks known as drums, stacked on top of each other and held together by a central iron dowel. The drums are slightly conical, tapering towards the top, and are not rigidly fixed on another. By allowing the columns to sway and absorb seismic energy, the ancient engineer ensured that the structure could withstand earthquakes without collapsing. When the Roman era came to an end in the 4th century, Jerash came under the control of the Byzantine Empire and it continued to be an important settlement as it adapted to Christianity. From about the 8th century a gradual decline began as the trade route shifted and the politics of the region changed. Significantly, the series of earthquakes also badly damaged Jerash, affecting the quality of life. In the end, Jerash was completely abandoned by the 13th century.
If you enjoyed watching this video, I encourage you to subscribe, click like and hit notification bell button to get updated of the new releases.